<laughs> I will be afraid tomorrow. <laughs> What the fuck? Uh. <coughs> 12th of December, day number 12 of 24 days of random awesomeness. Let's get right into today's bag, which I already showed yesterday. And uh, you see there's some sort of a handle. Hmm, what is it? Let's dig in. Let's open this up. And uh, as there is a handle, I know what's in here. And I remember this was basically a Christmas gift, a birthday gift, and another birthday gift, or another Christmas gift, if I remember correct. Because this is, uh, let's tr try to get this out the right way. Uh, hmm, like this. Let's pull, yes. This is my first video camera and um, as you may have seen on my youtube channel in the past um, i posted i think well years back i posted a video or one of my first movies i made when i was i think i was 14 um, and that was shot with this camera um, this was like a dream come true. I started um, making little movies with friends of mine when I was 12 with my dad's camcorder. And um, yeah, at one point I just wanted a camera. And of course cameras like this, even this was already a used camera in the time, uh, are super expensive. And um, yeah, that's why it uh, took me, uh, yeah, I think one Christmas or two Christmases and one uh, birthday um, together to get this camera. And I was so proud and I used this many, many, many years. And um, I shot many, many hours of stuff with it. Um, and the nice thing is I still, still have all those tapes somewhere in a box. I just saw that here is something missing that is probably still in the bag. Let me see. Yes, it is. Here it is. There we go. The uh, the eyepiece. Yeah, it needs a little cleaning. By the way, all these little hairs, this is stuff that comes off these bags. So, yeah. Well, okay, what is it? It is a Panasonic M10 VHS camera. And uh, this was state of the art in uh, 1994 or 1993. Maybe even earlier. Honestly, I don't remember. Let's say I was 14, so that was 1993. So probably 1993, 1992. And this was, uh, as I said already, a used camera at the time. So probably this came out, well, 1990 or in the early 90s. So let's, I just try to put back this eyepiece here without breaking anything because really don't want to break it. This clicked in place. There we go. Okay, awesome. Now you see there is a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I made so much uh, modifications. Also, my dad worked on this camera to uh, make some modifications. First of all, we have this uh, shoulder pad, which was screwed in here. Uh, I can remove this actually. Let's take this off. You see, this was just an accessory for this camera to make it also lying better on your shoulder and uh, also it looked better <laughs> because at the time I really was into camera equipment and stuff and I I really wanted a uh, a big camcorder uh, like a Betacam SP which was like uh, unbelievably unbelievably uh, expensive in that time I think we are talking about like uh, well a hundred thousand dollars or something for a Betacam SP camcorder so um, enormously expensive and uh, even SVHS was a very expensive format in things of cameras, especially when you are 14. So I was very proud of g getting this VHS camcorder. And as I said, um, I used it for many, many years. Uh, let's have a look. What do we have? Where should we start? Well, let's start on this side. So you would have it on your shoulder and you have your little controls here. Um, you have, uh, let's put this up here maybe so we see it better yes so we have all the normal uh, stuff you would uh, need from from a camcorder we have uh, this here a fade button so you could even fade out or fade in your movie 
uh, well, date and stuff like this. We don't, uh, I never really bothered of using that. We have a, I have to, a camera search button so you can search uh, on your tape um, a certain point uh, where you want to continue filming or cue something. We have our focus uh, auto and uh, manual focus. We have our white balance, auto white, uh, outdoor, indoor. So that would be 5,600 uh, degrees Kelvin or 3,200 degrees Kelvin. Our shutter speed, um, a standby button. So this uh, basically stops the head drum from spinning uh, when you're using the camera. You have a uh, auto push button. So this, um, when this is on manual and you push this, push this you have a short um, adjustment, uh, an automatic adjustment of focus. An index button, where I can't actually remember what it was because I don't think that this indexes something on the tape because um, then you would need another um, tape head. So I think, I don't, can't remember exactly what this was. A timer and interval function, you could basically do a simple time lapse with this camera. And uh, of course this was a VHS camera, not an SVHS camera. This was something I just glued on there. So as this logo of Dreamstorm Pictures, that was my, uh, yeah, my 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 film productive, uh, my production company when I was, uh, yeah, when I was uh, 14. Now that we have a little adjustment knob here, this is for the iris. So you can open or close the iris, adjust the iris um, or adjust exposure. We have uh, our lens, uh, which was a manual or automatic focus, of course. Um, we have our zoom, and my dad uh, put me this on here, so it was a little bit better to control, to make uh, manual zooms, or quick zooms, power zooms, stuff like that. Then we have, um, we have the viewfinder over here, and also there, of course, I glued on uh, the national TV um, logo. This was a pin. And my dad cut off the, the actual pin on the backside and glued it on. And this was camera three, <laughs> which was never the case, but this was just uh, to make it look a little bit more, uh, yeah. Now, uh, microphone, of course. We had a hi-fi stereo microphone, quite a nice microphone. Sound was quite good on this camera, I must say. We even have like a function button here for the mic. You had like a zoom function, so it was like, yeah, it was more directional or more undirectional we have the main power button up here and then we have a little uh, little compartment here where we have some more buttons can we see these yes so this is for yeah for the date and our uh, time and stuff like that we have an eject button next to it right here to eject uh, or to you know trigger the eject mechanism and then we have this thing here, and I will put this down now, and maybe I zoom in, this is easier, yes. So we have um, this here, you can move this up, and we have the controls over the VTR. So all the standard functions, and the moment you, this was basically a switch, when you put this down, the camera turns to a camera, and goes into a standby or record mode. Now let's turn this um, to the back. Here we see, maybe I should zoom out again a little, a little bit, yeah, like this. Here we can see now um, we have, well, our outputs. We have a stereo audio output, we have a composite output. This was for the power supply, which I still have, but uh, the cable is missing. So I um, had to come up with some way to uh, power this thing on. We have an audio select thing, um, this is a switch, this is for uh, when you're playing out um, footage from the camera over VHS tape, so you can, yeah, switch in um, what uh, audio mode you record it in. We have an edit connector. This was basically a, is it a five pin? Uh, yeah, it is a five pin connector, didn't connector probably, to, yeah, uh, connect a editing uh, rig or editing um, desk to it to um, use this camera as a, as a feed recorder. And uh, now I will zoom out and you will see that on the side my candle starts to go crazy. And that is because of yesterday's video where we were uh, sprinkling some uh, <laughs> lycopodium in there. And this now um, actually acts as a... Uh... 
Now, what else? Um, you see this. Uh, you see this box here again with my logo on it, and my dad built it. This this is, was pretty cool because, and I have to turn this around for now, because you had um, phones and a, a mic input. You even had an, a DC output here, what was quite cool for the time, um, quite semi-professional. And he made me this. So um, this actually plugged in here, and this plugged in here like this and the cable runs through the actual camera body to this little box he made and um, this basically was an XLR audio input for a microphone and a headphone output for um, you know the big the big jack um, plugs for some real um, headphones and that actually came in pretty handy because Later on, I would always uh, use an external mic with this camera. It was, of course, not phantom powered. This was just a microphone plug, but you would be able to hook up a better microphone, um, especially in that time, a, um, a Sennheiser. Uh, I can't remember which one it was, but it was a Sennheiser microphone and it helped a lot to get better audio. Now, let's see here on the side. Again, it is full of weird... Uh, <laughs> weird stickers, uh, digital audio, and even I put on a Betacam SP sticker there instead of uh, VHS. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, that was, that was me in the time. Three CCDs, of course, this camera only has one CCD. I think a one-third inch CCD, if I'm right, or three-quarter inch. But um, yeah, of course, the professional cameras had four CC uh, three <laughs> CCDs, and um, yeah, I just glued on some stickers there to make it look like it. Um, you have your record button here. There you can see it. So this is, uh, you would have your hand in here, like this, and you put this on the shoulder, and you can film. Now, to the front again, um, you have, uh, this is your, uh, your light, light sensor to adjust the iris. And here is another modification, this thing, my dad also put this on here. So I could add a, um, a matte box. Um, I had a matte box from an eight millimeter film camera. And um, yeah, so I could stick this in here and you had like, you know, the rectangular thing in the front. Um, you could not screw this on here because this turns. So um, it had to be steady, so um, you have to Put it um, in here. Yes, that was pretty awesome at the time. I was pretty, pretty happy of having this. And here we have a uh, little remote input where you can hook up a remote for editing or for, uh, yeah, for launching the camera, the record. Um, this was basically a jack plug with a knob. I remember that. And you could uh, simply hook it up there and then uh, remote control the camera. Or remote control the record of the camera. Yes. Now, of course, um, you want to see how this camera looks um, when it's operating. So I will zoom out, I will jump uh, across um, to the other bench and get me a, a bench power supply and I will try to hook this thing up somehow. I have the camera hooked up to a 12 volt power supply and uh, I will put the cable over here so it does not bother us right now. And uh, I actually used the pins inside of the battery compartment. There is now an old battery in there, just to hold it in place. And uh, yeah, let's turn this thing on. And uh, we see the LED came on and I heard already, I heard the mechanism do something. Let's see, do we have an image here? Oh, that looks pretty dark. That looks pretty dark. Let's see, can I tweak this somewhere and get this to life? Uh, I don't think so. I think the viewfinder might be might be gone. I mean, this thing is 30 years old. So maybe, maybe the caps have gone wrong, uh, bad in there. Or maybe it's simply the vacuum that went out of the actual tube. Now, unfortunately, the viewfinder is dead. And uh, of course, and I just found out that you can actually adjust this to your shape of skull 
Um, yes, um, the viewfinder is dead and of course we want to see how it looks, how this picture looks of this camera. So what I did is I ordered me a capture device. That's the thing I wanted for a long time because I have so many old VHS tapes that I want to digitize. So I thought let's get me a, yeah, a digitizer. So um, let's hook this up and let's see um, how the picture looks like. And also, I can show you this full screen, which is pretty cool. Uh, probably also with some sound. And uh, we can have a look how this sounds and how this looks. Now let's plug all this in. And uh, put this here for now. Let's plug in the actual camera. And I already hear some hum of the sound, which is not a good thing. And we have a picture. Yes, we have a picture. Pretty cool. All right, um, I will hit record. And uh, now I will put this on my shoulder and we can have a look how this looks through a 1980s camera, 1990s camera. So we are indoor, yes. You see there is the candle, is still burning. And uh, you see there is my screen. And uh, there is my pile of weird ashes and it starts to getting out of focus, I don't know. Not 100% aligned, but you are now seeing actual footage out of the Panasonic M10 VHS PAL camera. Uh, it looks pretty darn good, I would say. For an SD signal, um, I clearly see my hands. I see a lot of detail going on here. I, however, had to record the audio right now um, using my DSLR and my um, external mic because somehow there is no audio output uh, when recording um, straight out of the camera. Probably when I would put in a VHS tape and record it, play it back and grab that signal, it would have audio. But um, as the rollers went bad and some belts, I don't want to bother even putting in a tape because probably it will eat the tape. And um, yeah, I mean, VHS gets rarer and rarer. So I don't want to um, yeah, destroy another tape. Uh, yeah, let's have a quick look. What do we have tomorrow? I will grab the bag and uh, let's frame this. Can we get this in frame? Yes, we can. And it is quite heavy. I would say it's like six or seven pounds. So, and it looks, it sounds, it sounds plastic baggy, kind of thick plastic. Yes. All right, let's put this on the side. I hope you enjoyed this uh, piece of vintage electronic today. And I see you tomorrow and um, have a nice evening. Until then, see ya.